I was wondering how many flops does DC has to have for those who honestly believes that the brand is strong. In fact, it is stronger than it ever has been to come to terms with where the fan base stands at with that of DC. How many flops? I mean, how low can an opening weekend go before those people accept reality for what it is? Because at this moment, all I see is failure in regards to that of DC. Nothing is progressing. In fact, since 2017, or should I say 18, all I have seen is that of regression. It's, it's absolutely crazy. What's going on, my beautiful geek culture? As always, I'm your boy O. And today, it is time to talk about the new flop that is that of Joker Fulia Do. As you know, this is another one of those DC properties, right? And the studio at this very moment just is in a bad place with that of the fans. And they're speaking with their pockets at this very moment. And I feel that it's not going to change anytime soon. You know what I'm saying, you know? Like people believe that the relationship between DC and the fan base has a bright future, but in reality, it's in a very dark place. <laughs> Let's talk about Joker for Lea Do and his box office returns. And it's a little bit better overseas, but it is absolutely worst case scenario domestically. This article comes from HollywoodReporter.com. It is titled Joker Box Office Shocker. Not to me. Falea Du bombs with $40 million opening after receiving a D cinema score. Hmm. Wow. Todd Phillips' anti-hero musical starring Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga is the first Hollywood comic book pick in history to receive the failing grade. I told you, I ain't never seen a D cinema score in my life. So, when they say that, you know, oh, ain't tell you one lie. It is something that I have never even knew existed. I thought C was the lowest that you can get. I had no idea that a D cinema score is achievable. I didn't. Wow. Ooh. So, not only is DC flopping, they're intertwining themselves with that of history. And negative history. Hmm. You know, like eight flops in a row, you know, D Cinema score <laughs> probably is the only franchise that is averaging like $40 million opening weekend or something like that at this very moment, right? Ty Phillips sequel, Joker Faleo Do bombed in his box office debut with an estimated domestic opening weekend of $40 million. Well behind expectations after becoming the first Hollywood comic book movie in history to earn a D cinema score from audiences. Exit polls are equally as grim as audiences express their unhappiness with the anti-hero musical mashup, which did less than half of the business the first Joker did in his launch despite costing more than three times to make it at $190 million. Wow. Oh, Lord have mercy. As my grandma used to say, Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. This is an absolute spanking. The Joaquin Phoenix Lady Gaga picks pick, I'm sorry, was expected to open to at least 50 to 60 million dollars, but projections were constantly downgraded throughout the weekend as traffic stalled. Even on Saturday, most rival studios showed it opening to at least 45 to 47 million dollars. And don't forget that when the Warner Brothers movie first came on to tracking three weeks ago, it was pacing to earn 70 million dollars. Overseas, which looks a little bit better, Joker 2 opened to 81 million dollars in line with expectations for a global debut of 121 million dollars. Now, it opens in Japan and China, but 
No one is looking forward to the film earning a good amount over in those two markets. All right. The corporate behind the unfortunate turn of events, terrible word of mouth, hinch, rival studios believe the final domestic number could actually be in the whoa, 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 37 to 39 million dollar range when final grosses are reported on Monday. See, I told y'all I was getting word that the film could very well open to below $40 million. Now, this $40 million that is being reported at this very moment is Warner Brothers. Like, you're going to put it right at $40 million evenly? That is suspect. That is suspect. Nothing makes anything evenly. That's just like um Transformers. What's, which one was it? The Last Night? Right. The studio was very adamant that the film opened to $100 million when all of the trades were reporting $98 million. And till this day, the studio would say Transformers The Last Night opened to $100 million. <laughs> <laughs> Go look it up. I'm not lying to you, man. They, they were like, look, no, no, we we opened to $100 million. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? But this $40 million figure, it could very well be off by $3 million, which would give the film $37 million opening weekend. But let's just call it $39 million. Now, I have my paper here. Let's talk about legs. At $39 million, because I refuse to accept that $40 million opening weekend, I don't believe the film managed to earn that. With legs of 2.5, that would give the film a domestic total of $97.5 million. Overseas, which I would say look a little bit better, at $81 million, I don't have the numbers for Japan and China at this very moment, but when I do, I will factor them in next week. At $81 million with legs of 2.5, that would give the film $202 million overseas for a worldwide total of $300 million. A little bit better than I said when I told you guys $250, $275, but this may very well be an uphill battle as well because the word of mouth, it may not get $2.5 domestically. Now, overseas, I'm confident that it can get a multiplier of 2.5 because I hear that over in um, certain markets, they're actually liking the film. So that's the reason why it managed to open to $81 million because just the other day, I was telling you guys $70 million. So some markets likes the film. So it could very well hit that 2.5 mark as, as far as legs goes when it comes down to overseas. But when it comes down to domestically, it ain't got a chance in hell. This film may very well end like at 199 times his legs, right? <laughs> Not two, but 1.99. <laughs> oh, man. I swear to you, DC is just a brand that just fails over and over again, man. And this is an absolute shame on the studio part. You know what I'm saying? And when it comes to James Gunn, look. I understand that James Gunn did not produce this film per se, but he is the head of DC Studios. And I feel like that man is not a team player at all. He literally distanced himself from that of Joker for Leo Du. What kind of leadership is that, right? You're supposed to own it, baby. You're not supposed to run away from it. Yeah, I know people are going to say, man, this is not a James Gunn film. And it's not. It's not. But it is still a DC Studios film. Go and look it up. So you have to manage that, man. That's it. In reality, Joker for Lea Do should have been something that James Gunn said, look, we are not going to be doing this at all. But. I get the feeling that he did not want to step on Todd Phillips' shoes, right? He wanted to give him free reign and, and let him do whatever he wanted to do. Because if it was me, I would have caught this mid-production and said, shut it down. Shut it down. We're not doing this. That's how I feel. 
In fact, there's plenty of projects that DC has produced that I would have never greenlit, right? And not saying that that's fault of James Gunn, but the way that they structured the Flash film, no way I was doing that movie at all. The way that they did that of Shazam, Fury of the Gods, no way. No way. Birds of Prey, The Suicide Squad, none of that would have gotten greenlit if I was in charge of that of DC. Plain and simple. Joker for Lil Dude would have never seen the light of day. Never. I would never attach what I'm running to something this garbage. That's how I feel, man. And not to mention when it comes down to the quality that DC is putting forth at this very moment, I have every reason to believe that it isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Because everybody that's working on a DC project right now, you can't tell them nothing. They refuse to take your feedback. You know what I'm saying? They refuse to understand exactly what the fans want. And I know people are going to say, dude, the only thing really in production is that of Supergirl. And I'm talking about every decision ever. You know what I'm saying? Like like the decision to bench that of Hal Jordan. Right? The decision to reboot the dc animated universe right and give us that of that 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 awful tomorrow verse and stuff like that you know they're not listening and i'm talking about more than just movies here right comic books everything the only person that's listening that has anything to do with that of dc is the great todd mcfarlane that's it todd todd was the reason why we got this 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 cape Batman from Batman versus Superman, right? This was not DC's idea. Even though it is something that we wanted, right? Todd said, look, they're not going to give it to you theatrically. I'm going to give it to you physically for you to have those memories. Todd McFarlane has no problem listening to that of the fans. Feedback, baby. I'm a part of the Todd McFarlane toy group and every time people talk about a certain toy or a version of a toy Todd be like you got it two three months later bam people were talking about this Batman from Batman vs Superman with a cloth a, a cloth cape and, and guess what Todd said give me a few and you gonna have it you're gonna have it so shout out to Todd McFarlane for being the only person over anything DC Who's willing to listen to the fans? Shout out to him. Straight up. But back to Joker for Leo Do. I wonder how many heads are going to be rolling tomorrow, right? When everybody had to sit down at the table and talk about what went wrong. I wonder whose head is going to be laying on the table willing to let it get chopped off. I just wonder. I wonder. I would love to be a fly on the wall in that meeting, right? Because they spent $200 million for this. You have to talk about this. This is something that you have to converse about, right? Because you also have to come up with your next strategy. In two, three weeks, this thing needs to be pulled from theaters and go straight to screaming. HBO Max. But if you ask me, it should skip HBO Max. The smart thing to do here is instead of bringing it to HBO Max immediately, you need to sell it to Netflix. Netflix will give you $100 million for this, man. And that way you could probably get close to breaking even. Who knows? Who knows? So if that's not their mindset at this very moment, the studio will continue to be dumb, which is why they got that D cinema score. I told you yesterday, D stands for dumb. Because they're going to look at this situation and they're going to get everything wrong out of it, right? Oh my goodness, this, that, this, that. As they always do. Overreaction, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder what the excuses is going to be when James Gunn Superman doesn't really perform all that well. I wonder. I wonder. Because as you can see, DC will continue to circle the drain. Nothing is going to change in the future. I am not optimistic about what James Gunn has to bring to the table. And as of right now, I'm not excited about anything that DC has going on. 
Nothing. Nothing. And it seems to me that a lot of people feel the same way. And they have been feeling that same way for quite a while at this very moment, right? Bomb at the bomb at the bomb. Oh, you know what? Before I get out of here, I want to tell you guys that Joker for Leo Do is opening on par with that of Morbius. <laughs> wow. And if we go to Captain America, my Captain Marvel, the Marvels. That's that's what it is. The Marvels. And you go to the Marvels, I believe the Marvels will have a better opening weekend at this very moment. Now, Joker has the advantage overseas, but the Marvels opened to $46 million domestically. And the Flash, I believe, was 67, wasn't it? I can't remember it. The Flash was 55. So, Right now, the only advantage that Joker for Leo Du has over all three of those films is his overseas numbers. That's it. Because all of these films gross less than $300 million worldwide, but Joker for Leo Du definitely has the opportunity to cross over that threshold. But domestically, these films could very well leave Joker for Leo Du in the dust. That is something that a lot of people needs to understand you have Morbius doing better than a DC film coming off of $1 billion. And speaking of that, at this very moment, Batman versus Superman is the only DC sequel in recent years to be successful. Think about that for a second. Aquaman 2 flopped. Joker 2 flopped. The Suicide Squad 2 flopped. Ever since that of the Dark Knight trilogy, Batman vs. Superman is the only DC film that is a sequel that has been successful. Goes to show you where the true fan base lies. I'm your boy O. Hopefully you have watched this video all the way to the end up your brought that algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, please be sure to do so. I'm trying to reach that magical number of 10,000 subscribers. So I'll be highly appreciative. You will help me cross over that threshold by hitting that subscribe button. And if you are going to hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that notification bell because YouTube absolutely sucks and notifying subscribers that content creators has uploaded videos to their platform. And don't forget to hit that like button. To help me out that algorithm, baby. But in the comments below, let me know what you think about Joker Folia do opening to $39 million because I refuse to give it that $40 million and $121 million worldwide. And also, what do you think about the film opening to less of that of the Marvels, Morbius, and also The Flash? Always remember, let's let bon Tom roulette. That means let the good times roll. But let me know in the comments below.